welcome all of you to the April 18th meeting of the Board of Regional Commissioners for Cape Cod. And please join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please join us in remembering all of those who, are served, who have served our country both here and abroad, and especially for all those who have given their lives for us. We have, well, that was a nice start. That's a little courage of I think we need a new chair. Okay. Great. Thank you. Dr. Right. Okay. We want to start with public comment. And who's first? Yes. Julianne. You want to bring, Julian. bring that seat up a little bit and introduce yourselves for the camera. My name is Joanne Marimoto. I'm a senior scientist with the Association to Preserve Cape Cod, and I'm also staff for the Barstool County Coastal Resources Committee. And? My name is Don Kieran. I'm Assistant Director with the Association of Reserve Cape Cod. Uh, we're here today. Thank you uh, for uh, hearing us on this very short notice. This concerns the Cape Cod Water Resources Restoration Project. Um, as you're aware, the um, Cape Cod Water Resources Project was approved in 2009 and funded in 2010 uh, with $6.5 million in federal stimulus funding for the first round of projects only. The full 10-year program would, would restore 1,500 acres of degraded salt marsh, 4,200 acres of fresh spawning habitat, and 1,700 acres of shellfish fence which would support the Cape's coastal economy. Um, the value of the Cape's coastal resources and the coastal economy is listed there. Um, commercial shell fishing, uh, 6.3 annually, $6.3 million annually. Shellfish aquaculture estimated $4.5 million annually. Um, and the value of clean fishing in two towns alone is estimated, was estimated at $20 million in 2009. And also, salt marshes uh, support a uh, vast majority, 75% of commercial and recreational important fish. So far, the Cape Cod Water Resources Restoration Project to date has funded and initiated approximately 29 projects, which are stormwater mitigation projects to restore protection fish beds, um, restoration of tightly restricted salt marshes, and restoration of compared fish runs. Uh, these have been initiated and are expected to be concluded um, by the end of this year. Also to date, from this first round of funding, uh, 96 jobs in 24 firms have uh, been created um, through this program. So it's been a very successful program, both for restoration of coastal resources and for the local economy. Uh, however, permanent funding of this 10-year program is needed. Uh, the USDA's watershed program supports programs such as the Cape Cod Water Resources Project and others nationwide. And on this national watershed program of the USDA needs funding. The FY12 federal budget did not fund the USDA watershed program. And we were quite alarmed about that. However, it appears that the current draft farm bill in the Senate committee apparently contains funding for watershed restoration. Uh, we need to ensure um, that we need to encourage our legislators to make sure that the USDA watershed program is funded and that the farm bill that includes funding for the USDA watershed program has funding for watershed planning, watershed operations, and watershed rehabilitation for Asian watershed dams. These are projects that would benefit not only the Cape Cod Water Resources Restoration Project, but also other similar restoration projects in Massachusetts and nationwide. So um, support for the USDA's watershed program would have not only a regional benefit by funding the Cape Cod project, but also 
state and national benefits as well. Last year, at the request of the County of uh, uh, Resources Committee, um, the county commissioners sent a letter to legislators urging continued funding uh, for the pro for the Peatland Water Resources Project. And this letter was extremely helpful for maintaining the support. This spring, the Coastal Resources Committee um, voted uh, to request again that the county commissioners send a letter to legislators urging support for the Peatland Water Project. And we have drafted a proposed um, draft letter, and we've also included in your new packet um, the example of the past letter that was sent out mm -hmm. last April mm -hmm. or May. Uh, for this um, letter um, to Senators Kerry and Brown and Congressman Kennedy, um, time is of the essence. We've letters must reach the Senators' offices by this Friday. And so we would respectfully request that um, the commissioners vote approval of such a letter um, to be emailed and sent out um, to senators carried around. Um, I would make a motion that we uh, send this letter of support. And since we have it right here, we can sign it. I'll, I'll support that. I, I would add one other thing. So the young secretary for USDA spoke from the National Association of County Officials. And she talked about her concern about that funding being cut because of the importance of agriculture nationally as it contributed to, uh, uh, let's say, to, uh, economic vitality. Yes. So you do have, we have support at the agency level. There, there's concerns as we are. I, I, I want to mention that uh, Don Kieran has been working with the National Watershed Coalition to build support for um, funding of the USDA's watershed program. We're embedded to his work. Well, so I think, too, we, we shared your concern uh, this year when the, it wasn't funded. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so this is very good. And, and thank you for providing this letter because it outlines exactly what we should say. And we appreciate your doing that Thank for you. us, right? Yeah. We, we've made, uh, we've already initiated contact with, we've been maintaining contact with our legislators, but with this new effort, initiated contact with Senator Kerry and Senator Brown's office, so they are aware of this. Um, and we've also reached out to the other um, project sponsors for other projects in the state. The, the watershed program that's going on in the North Shore, which is a, a model for the K project and it's some dam rehabilitation project sponsors from the interior of Massachusetts that all stand to benefit from this. So as Joanne said, it's it's not just a Cape project, it's a Massachusetts benefit as well as a national benefit. Um, so just a little bit of, of friendly nudging from the county commissioners along with the effort that we're doing and what the other sponsors are doing would be very helpful at this point too. We're happy to do that. Yeah. How did it happen to get in the fine bill? Do you know that? What, what, yeah. Yeah, what the, the uh, use, it usually was a, a yearly um, discretionary uh, funding line item in the budget for the watershed program. And um, it was, as, as we know, it was eliminated from the budget last year. But the Farm Bill is up for renewal this year. And it has many similar conservation programs in it. Um, every, not just farm mm -hmm. stuff, food stamps, all sorts of things. Um, but, it, but in addition to the conservation items that are already in it, there has been work to, um, to insert the watershed program into this five-year funding mechanism so that we have to go back to Congress every year and ask for money. Um, the other benefit of this is that it, um, it funds the national program and gives the National Resources Conservation Service a lump sum of money to use at their discretion to distribute to the various projects across the country. And we, we feel very comfortable that we would benefit here on Cape Cod from that because our Cape project has been touted by that agency as a national model for them as a new way of looking at watershed restoration. So they're very much um, looking at the Cape project to be successful. They just need the funding for it. And so the National Watershed Coalition has been spearheading the effort to, to get it inserted into the farm bill. Excellent. Good. It has greater benefits than we would anticipate. Yes. Okay, so you have a motion and a second. In the second. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
unanimous. Great. We will sign it and get it on its way. You can either take it with us and email it. Uh, we either. Would you like it? Yes. Well, we will need a copy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you would just stop in the office and ask Barbara to make a copy. Or we can. What would you prefer us to do? Would it be easier if we? You, you know, I just, I, I think that it, it may bear more weight coming from, from us. Okay. Yeah, I have then some instructions for um, emailing the letter given the urgency. Okay. okay. So we'll give this to you. Sure. Okay. okay. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good luck. Thank you. Keep us posted. You will. Okay, is there any other public comment? Beth, Albert, George, Mary Falzer? Are you, are you not coming to you? Are you a shepherd? Okay, we're a shepherd. We're always a shepherd. Okay. We're going to make it. Um, so, uh, Mark suggested I come before you today to discuss uh, the possibility of our department taking some space up in the renovations that are going on over the gym. Over the gym. Yeah, well, in the, in the gym. I'm sorry, over the... In the lot. Um, in, in the lot. In the lot. I don't know, in the what, I don't know if it's, it's really lab. a second... Above the lab. Right. Yeah. So um, this started because I had actually asked John Blaisdell the facilities about putting soundproofing in our office, and he said, well, before you do that, why don't you see if there's something else? And so I made copies of what he provided for me so you can see this space. I thought it would be three. nice. Well, actually, um, this I think was originally designed for the for the health department, and then the health department and environment is moved into a different space. And so, as far as I know, this space does this is make sense? Should you be in this space? Well, it okay, depends. I, I haven't seen this this plan at all. Be in the so. space above yeah. the lab. John said he spoke well. This is. This is, uh, I mean, he was I'll in this. George, off the hook. George and I spoke a little bit this morning about a different topic, and, and he mentioned that Beth is coming in. I said, oh, yeah. And my only question is, is what do we do if the lab needs to expand further beyond sort of what right. they're already occupying? That's, that's my only question. So this, yeah, this is, and I don't have the full floor plan. This is only the one section that John provided for me. Sort of the other side of that coin is, what's left sort of in the old jail, which is sort of where this whole thing kind of originated from. Some thoughts after we were touring that mentioned, well, you know, it'd be nice to have some better space up here, because she's pretty tight where she is, as you know. She's in the end office on the other side of the building, and in, the, in the middle of the building, I mean, and there's not really any conference space, and staff is tight. So the option is originally to go, and go into the old jail, but sort of the space that's left is sort of not contiguous to whatever where everyone else is, so it'd be a little bit isolated. So, um, so Beth and I guess John, I don't know if you had any input. George came up with this idea, which I don't have an issue with, except for that question. Right. Well, but you know, I think it's a good idea from the standpoint that the the remaining space in the old jail really needs to be looked at in a comprehensive way. And the more we just put people there because the space is available, the more complex it will be <coughs> further down the line. So I think go to, to, to get you where you need to be now and to use that space, which does make sense in a way. I mean, uh, uh, that, and then at some time in the future, other different types of uh, uh, adjacencies that I, I would call them come up where it means that you would fit more in with whatever else is being planned, that would work. But I think for now, and even maybe into the future, I, I think, think it's a I good have, idea. I have a question. When is the loft area going to be finished? To be able to be moved uh, into We're looking at, I think, a complete building kind of wrapped up by the end of the year? In yeah. September. September, the, September, the, the end yeah, of the year. Yeah, it's and difficult to know because we had uh, planned on, uh, because of the financial piece, doing a whole lot of upstairs. There's one area that's planned for an expansion lab already, the new instrument, particularly the LCMSNS, on the rear portion of it. And Gomin has some area plans there up until about where I can see this, this space being. Uh, 
talking to the architects, the place was planned for office space, very much laid out like this. So it doesn't sort of go against their particular plans. Right, this the, came, this was right, not my build right. up. This was, this was what John already had. I had no input into this Right, whatsoever. it was planned for was offices. Planned well it was this. just as the finances got tight. We had not planned on moving our department into this area since we're already sort of settled in in the old jail area and, and doing quite nicely there. So in that, in that way, this makes sense. I, I'm just, <clears throat> the space that is available for office space would accommodate your department. The space that was planned here yes. or there would no longer accommodate our office space because by the, when we began our planning process, there was very little in the way of thinking about an, a medical reserve corps because it was out for it. It wasn't even part of the department. So we have the medical reserve corps and their planning area there. Uh, Kendall's staff was too. And there was no real thought that it would blossom the way it has blossomed. There are three, three staff people and storage area required for their records, secure storage area required for their records. Emergency planning, which was primarily Sean O'Brien, uh, that has expanded. So I will, I could clearly say that to the thought of moving us back into that area where we were originally planned, the second story of the gym, is probably impractical and doesn't meet our space needs, along with some other expansions that were we planned as far as staff goes. So in that sense, it makes perfect sense to say it was planned for office area. It, it definitely fits within the architect's plans because there was a lot of thought going into it. Are you actually going to have upstairs? This certainly doesn't counter that. And we have no immediate plans for this area here. The tail end of the gym, we're expanding laboratory into uh, that loft area, the instrument. And where we go after that, it would it's totally conjecture after that, you know, it's vision. Yeah, it does, but it seems to make sense that at least part of your department, I mean, I know that there's the uh, the additional medical team and the medical safety, safety and emergency the safety, um, you know, is kind of overflowing from that department. So your department okay. itself, it just, God bless you, it just seems to, um, makes sense that you're in the one building. I mean, your lab is there, your work is there, and I'm trying to keep, there's, the lab is not attached to the building, to the jail, to the old. It's in the gymnasium. It's, it's, it's attached by the tunnel. It is, it's by the tunnel. So, in going through that tunnel, and then just going right up is where you are. Am I right? I'm trying to figure where out where you am. are compared to where the gym is. No, if you go down the tunnel, you would come to uh, Jack Mead's storage area. Then you go to IT. Then you go to IT. Oh, yeah. And then to get to George, you have to go upstairs. Right. If you went immediately upstairs from IT, you'd probably be near Kendall's area, yeah. which is the right. septic home program, three staff people. And then through that set of doors, we get into tobacco control, which we have a more staff right. addition there and the medical resort core area and then as you went toward the front of the building you'd reach my office, Sean's office and about that. Remember when you go into the conference room and you harbor you come. You go up the stairs, the tunnel is sort of underneath that Correct. and it goes into the gym and you can see the gym to the right as you go up the stairs. To the left there's the Harvard View conference room. Okay. That's a practical matter. What I'm hearing is that there's space available is that you determine at about a time when uh, when you do not know if you need expansion space. This seems to be an appropriate use of the space and it sounds like we should go ahead. It seems to me that it was already planned for offices. We would, okay. It would be a nice So when, when is it available? September. September? October? Yeah, no, I John didn't seem, I saw John this morning, John yeah. Bell, and he, the whole issue, as I had said, Originally, when when I was thinking you were going into the old jail, I said, "Well, who's going to pay for that? Because I don't have any money there." And so he came up with that sort of question, wondering why it was a question. 
And I said, well, that was when we were referring to the old jail bill. Right. We had to do some money to renovate. So he didn't, <coughs> he's got the money in place to do whatever he needs to I mean, do. For this, it's, it's, just, it's just really throwing up walls, yeah. which we had not planned on doing because of the money situation. And the only walls we had planned is there were, toward the rear end of the building, mm -hmm. two offices contiguous, uh, well, they were adjacent to one another, which would have been uh, emergency planning and uh, Kendall's office, which now would not be in uh, adequate space. We're going to combine those two for the laboratory for the new instrument, which you see in this amount. So on the second floor of the yes, gym. Yes, the, the gym. second floor of the gym will definitely have lab facility there. We're using the plumbing, which was really the restroom plumbing for venting and water supply. So on the second floor, assuming that goes and your instrument, the front end of the new instrument, who else will be up on the law? We'll only be gum in. Gum in. And that new instrument lab, which takes about probably about a half of that space to the rear. The other spaces really are open to yeah. below. There is no wall right. <coughs> right in the middle. They actually look over the laboratory. So if you do that and go in and the instrument, is there any available space on the second floor? There's one the office space that I know of, which was planned, I believe, the public health nursing spot. Public health nurse was on that location. And that one small office space. Is it a, no a noisy area? up there in the loft with the lab and all the other stuff well, that's there? The, if something goes on the second floor, the, you know, the instrument we anticipate, <laughs> you won't hear anything out of that instrument problem. It will be a, essentially a white room. It's for pharmaceutical personal care products. So, you know, people wear perfume and you know, I can start second that um, So the front end is really it's really somewhat isolated. It can be somewhat isolated. And if, if it fits, that's neat. We have no, absolutely no problem with that. We're just, I'm just looking ahead to where we're going with the laboratory. Right, and, and that's and what I'm thinking it's of. It's not going to scream ahead, but there are definitely some things we have planned. And if we can do it within the footprint that we will have, we'll do it there. If we require additional space to the front of the building, we'll be back in front of you. But right now, that's not like right there. And here is a need that is right there. So, so this could be a temporary any, situation. It could be permanent. Yeah. It could be temporary. We've always uh, sort of somewhat prided ourselves to be able to work within the confines of what we have. Right. And we'll make every attempt to do that. If we need the space, we'll let you know. It just seems to me that if it's the health lab and it's your department, it makes sense to have health offices in that other area of the gym. And if that means moving several people from the health department, to what would, what, well, not even just to make room, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. it just makes sense to do, I mean, I just feel that that, in my head, it makes sense, so. There's no physical ability capacity wise to fit the entire health department in that current anymore. That is that is a true not, statement. Not and you're not capable of doing that. Correct. Okay. And in my mind it does sort of make a nice fit. The lab is our staff, with the exception of two people, don't have the immediate connection with the lab necessary. We do landfill monitoring, we do beach monitoring. Mm -hmm. And from the monitoring I do it. But They'll be right there. It's not like, uh, you know, it's no more than a stone throw from where my office is to where the new lab is. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's a huge walk there. And it does make sense, I'll speak more philosophically now, mm -hmm. to have best department there since a lot of what we're doing with public health nursing, a lot of what we're doing in the public health arena finds a little bit more overlap with health and human services component. And I would enjoy that connection since it offers opportunities for more funding opportunities and more collaboration opportunities with the department that at least has the word health in their name. 
How do you feel about this now that you need to talk to you? You need a motion for this. Well, we're, we're still discussing. How do I feel about it? Well, I mean, if, if there's a chance that I'm going to be asked to move, I would rather not move. I mean, I, I don't want to. It's just it's just way too crazy. It's too confusing. But with that said, I mean, we've got the Human Rights Commission looking for some space. Mm -hmm. uh, we have interns, which, because we have such a small staff, we're depending on more and more our, our interns. We have three interns this summer. So, you know, and it, 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 so if there's going to be any growth to our department in any way, I mean, I need, I need more space. So does it make sense to invest in the space we have now and soundproof it because it's because of the staff needs? Or, you know, I would love to move, but if, you know, I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> it, it's, hard, it's hard to say, but, you know, it's, it, it's, it's an unknown. I so we should take a look at it. Well, have, have you gone over and looked at it? Uh, the space. I mean, and is there room to grow? It's up not there yet. It's, it's not, not there yet. It's not there yet. It's just water. No, I know. It's just water. Right. I mean, how many? Not been up there. Walk around. Scrape right. the space. Out. But I, I agree with George too. I mean, there are you know there are you know Synergies. there are areas yeah. for 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 synergy. I mm -hmm. mean, so so that you know that that's a nice that's a nice thing to be more physically in <clears> you know in proximity. But you know, I also don't want to do something just. Without having thought through it all, yeah. and, and I know, you know, this is initially this whole world. thing was was planned out for the health department. They've grown; they can no longer use it. So, it's, it's so well. Maybe what you need to do is to take some more time and look at this, and look at what and and, and what your expansion needs might be, and whether or not this space up here that is even available, all of it or whatever, however much of it, would be. Uh, would be useful for you. So I think you need to think about what your needs are. Well, I can only look by what, right, what, what they've drafted out here because it's, it hasn't been built out yet. No, I know, but I mean, maybe it could be drafted out in a different fashion. In oh, other words, you would have to look at, you have interns, so you need a space for an intern. Uh, there are other, whatever needs. Yeah, John and I did talk a lot about using what the, using the plans and having them, that it would fit it for would us, fit. at least from what I can tell by looking at the paper. This looks like you got like an extra intern space from what I, <coughs> I, I, I don't know what these X's mean. Is this I, I, I just, just I definitely decided decide today. Let me, let me go, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. um, let me go back to sort of what Chi was thinking as I kind of ponder a little bit more. I, I sort of I think maybe George what she's suggesting beyond just everybody moving into the yeah. lot right. is does it make sense for another section of your staff who's currently in the west wing to be in the loft that makes more sense and then put Beth in maybe that space. Right, uh, right. And it's sort of, you know, unless there's a good reason to do that with some synergy or something, then it's just moving for the sake of moving, you know what I mean? Right. Okay. Well, there are, def there are definitely sections of the <coughs> staff that deal more directly with the laboratory that could go in that space. I was, as I was hearing us initially, my first impression is I know what it's like to be crammed in spaces there. Mm -hmm. The offer was, you know, we'd have no objection, certainly. Yeah. Do I, would I weigh this out differently if I was, had control of everything? Yeah, I would. I'd put staff over there that more directly relate to the laboratory mm -hmm. in that space. I would uh, plan expansion in an area that was more administrative in our space that doesn't connect with the laboratory, and it would work. Yeah. And it would be fine to work that yeah. way. It troubles me. I think it, we should. It hasn't been enough what I'd call what you would look at in terms of what your anticipated need would be over the next five year period, and also what your anticipated need would be over the next five year period. Because I think a five year you know, a five-year period is, a, is as about as permanent as you get in public sector stuff. So I, I think right. you need to take a little more time and look at it. Would you guys maybe. mind if you and George, Beth and George and John, maybe sat down or something? Yeah, well, this goes back to like yeah. having a plan of the building yeah. and having and, and being really comfortable <coughs> taking that it can meet your needs. I think that has never yet happened. If it takes a week or three weeks or whatever, I think you need to, to do that and see exactly where people will fit how they will work together, whether it meets all of your needs now and then and five years from now. 
based on what you know about the next five years? If I could, yeah. just, just as to mention or to let you know why this type of planning was not in place, is as we proceeded with the laboratory, the cost of the laboratory, and uh, building the shell whole thing, it became evident to us initially that the second floor financially was not going to be feasible. So I, as director of the health department, then looked at that as a boundary, not to go beyond. If, that, if it's opened up at the second floor, it's feasible to do something that, of course, so if it's the boundary, and you can expect that it's the directory and health department, and certainly not this director of her department, will relook at it. It just seemed to me like, okay, it looks like the money's reaching this far. Right. We get the first floor, we can sink something on the second floor because the infrastructure need isn't big up there. Throw a few walls, we're fine. But if that opens up, then of course that should open up a period of time between the departments and even a relook at where I would put my Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to answer that one back, Bill. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll follow up on this. No, Yeah, we're staying away from Bill. Oh. Bill has a cold. I'm not sure why he's here. With the fever. Sorry. I know. I know. We're sorry. We don't want to make like, act like we're wrong. Okay. So it takes a try. There were uh, a couple of things that Mark said might be appropriate for this. One mm -hmm. is that you've okayed three of my out-of-state jobs, and uh, these have not been at the county's expense, but those agencies that have asked me to go do presentations. And the summer of all of those presentations, aside from bringing to the rest of the world what we do at the test center, there's been a clear focus on the presentations, and that has been the pharmaceuticals, personal care products, endocrine disrupting compounds, primarily originating from septic systems. Those have been the focus of the presentation because some of the grant work we have done has underscored the need for the research in that area and some of the research that has been funded to our department, those results I am bound by our contracts under those grants to present them at national conferences. So Rhode Island was National On-Site Wastewater Recycling Association. Kansas was a Kansas on site, which covers pretty much a lot of the mid country states, and Oregon, which covers the western part. And uh, I go to those conferences to keep up with what the kind of research is, where the research needs are, and where we can fill in particularly the needs for Kid Cop. Because of the close hydraulic connection of wells to septic systems. And now, more importantly, identified it's a real key topic, uh, fresh water as well as marine water inputs from septic systems from these pharmaceuticals, particularly endocrine disrupting compounds. That's what we've been presenting on. We've recently completed and nearly going to press with what we call a white paper, which is a discussion of all pertinent topics relative to septic systems and CECs or contaminants of emerging concern. And you'll get a copy of that as soon as it's done. It's pretty much there. I'm doing a final edit and we'll publish that as part of one of the grants that we got. So that was what I was here for those three out of state approvals that you've given and that was one of the topics. So Okay. There is a continuing concern I have about the effect of hormones that you know, have entered the water table uh, through you know, confusion through septic systems. Uh, there, was a, uh, there was an article that we said, uh, I believe it was a good cartel by a physician from the army, who spoke about that last year. And I think that that's an important area. And I wonder in one of these conferences, is there any problem or discussion about the effect on hormones? In the effect on uh, the early maturation of, uh, of children? Well, it's pretty clear that there are three priority issues with relative to CECs and septic systems. At the top of the list, in my estimation, and I put it in the white paper, is hormone disruption. It's not so much the hormones. Those are fairly low concentrations coming from septic systems in the nanogram level. However, some of the plasticizers and some of the phenolic surfactants that we're using that are really a silent spring who's been before you with some of the presentations. 
has really focused the issue here in Cape Cod. That is the issue. And it is not so much hormone disruption in humans because that, although documented, is really there are not a, enough good studies done on that. But environmentally, hormone disrupting compounds are wreaking havoc worldwide. I mean, the number of papers published just in the last four years on that particular topic has like climbed exponentially compared to the previous years. And it continues to climb. Every time the little vibration in my pocket is a Google cert, a Google alert when a paper is published. And we review that paper and we put it in context of what's happening in the Arctic Cod. It's somewhat the wastewater disposal issue. And so that has been a lot of chatter at the conferences, but primarily by academics. They were some scientists, Colorado School of Mines, some of the stuff at UTL Berkeley. Uh, and we keep in touch with that research because that's going to be some fundamental questions that they answer and ask here at Cape Cod relative to decentralized wastewater and some other issues. So that white paper is going to be fairly important. And DEP continues to support some of the grant proposals we're putting together for the test center. And we are working with some, we've submitted some concurrent proposals or collaborating with proposals with Silent, Silent Spring, Dr. Shane Snyder out of the University of Arizona, uh, and others that are submitting proposals down in South. And using our test facility to try some of this stuff out. So we're one of the few facilities that actually have leaching soil systems. So between ourselves and Baylor, Colorado, a couple other places in the country, they're not doing it. For, a lot of the research is held back because of the analytical capability. But through your grace, we've had some analytical capability build up here in our laboratory. In fact, we will have some capabilities within the next year to then all of the hormone compounds and a lot of the phenolic surfactants, which are hormone disruptive compounds. And that's, that's really what enables us to, to be in this wide arena. I've also spoken to folks at um, with Slow Ocean Graphics because I believe that in the context of expanding the lab capability, we need to be able to determine uh, some hormone disrupting characteristics of some of the wastewater streams we generate and what's out there in the environment. So I'm looking into starting something called YES, YES, uh, Yeast Estrogen Sensitivity Testing. And I believe our laboratory will be capable of it. And I'll be not coming to you for support about that, but rather great support. Okay. Thank you. So most of the discussions in my out-of-state ramblings have been relating to that. Although at the national conferences, they all want to know what we're doing with nutrient recovery, nutrient, uh, nutrient removal, things like that. But pretty much between the two challenges, the nutrient removal piece on the on-site setting is relatively minor and well understood. And there are new technologies coming. We're testing two new ones recently. And we get inquiries maybe one a month from companies around the United States. And if they look like they're good candidates, we'll test them. Otherwise, we kind of discourage them to go to another testing center that's really looking mostly at secondary treatments. So how is the nutrient removal going? I mean, what is the latest? Well, there are three technologies on the horizon that we see, three sort of broad technologies. One, which is more proprietary, the nitric system, and everybody beats that to death, but sequencing batch reactors as well as membrane bioreactors. There's two companies actively doing research and development at our facility that are pushing those numbers down and trying to scoop that out to the market. But none of them have been permitted. Then they have to go through a permitting process. They would have to go through a permitting process here in Massachusetts, which, of course, is a little bit more onerous than other parts of the country. That's why they come to our facility, because 
There's the old expression, New York, New York, if you make it there, you make it there. <laughs> well, in the septic business, it's Massachusetts. If you can make it there, you can make it there. So we're still um, looking at probably 50% removal, 70% of the time for most of these uh, yeah. systems. I right would now. say for the majority of the technologies out there, yes. But for the cream of the crop and matrix, of course, is permitted, just not permitted at that level. Mm -hmm. I would say that technology, you could. I'm moving that more into the, yeah, that's kind of a sure bet. Kind of. Okay. And there's all maintenance costs and fees that go with those. Right. right. Okay. So that was one thing I wanted to, to bring up before you today. There are two other three things. One is the Attorney General's office has contacted us regarding uh, the availability of some funds to be used for environmental concern, particular very focused concern, and that is because they have uh, gotten a judgment or in the process of getting a judgment against a particular offender and they're saying we have this amount of money could you give us three ideas or give us some ideas on how to use it I gave them the ideas uh, they came back with one particular one that was relevant to that particular offense and they said fine and it, it kind of looks like we will be getting uh, money to administer an involving loan question for the removal of underground tanks uh, in the residential setting or underground piping or lines with under, and be able to give the folks a loan and it will be a, revol a revolving type loan. So you will see before you at some point in the near future a sort of memorandum of agreement between the Attorney General's office and the county specifically administered through us, and I thought I would put that really right on the same back as our septic loan program, because we're pretty much in the game of revolving loans. And it would be administered through there, and the funds would be available for loaning out, and I mentioned that we would probably take some of the funds to advertise that particular program for folks who have underground tanks in the backyard that we presently don't know about. As you may know, the County Health Department has for years uh, assisted all of the towns in regulating underground tanks, organizing tank gangs, addressing this issue, permitting, um, making sure they know where they are. But we know there's probably about 120 to 150 out there we don't know about, and there's about 80 in our stable of those that have not yet been removed according to regulations but encourage the times to pass regulations which they did for 20 year removal 30 and 17. so that is one of the things you may see before you in the future it's interesting that you mention that because i had a neighbor this year who uh, removed a propane tank an underground propane tank it had been there for 40 years or more and it, it fueled a barbecue pit. Yeah. And he was told that he had to remove it, and they had to they had to let some of the propane out for a few days, which was very uh, sure. odorous, I might say. And then in the end, though, it came out, and that was the end of it. So yeah. I'm sure if he had had it, there are other Sure, people. for a gas tank like that, mm -hmm. which is... Yeah, are you talking oil? We're or? using oil or gasoline. Oh, yes, oil primarily gasoline. oil tanks. A lot of 330s were put in, 330 gallon tanks were put in. They were basement tanks, but they were buried inappropriately. Mm. And some of them have rusted. For years, we have been encouraging. In fact, we have our other department a testing program for the towns. We go out and we test the tank. We test the soil vapor out of it. And at that point, we normally have that educatable moment for the homeowner and encourage them to take the tank <coughs> because eventually they are going to leak if they're not double contained. Mm -hmm. And so we've had a program like that. And this, these monies fit right into that program. And the other ideas of, that we brought up, they said, no, we like this one. On the septic, on the loan, on the revolving account, so you're saying you're just going to use the septic, or it's going to be modeled, it's going to be on the same model? model. On that. On that. Okay. Probably run out of that same office. It will be a separate account, separate that account. Be set okay. up right. here that could only be used for that purpose, mm -hmm. except for the advertising piece. And then it will just keep okay. evolving. All and right. I've worked out, I've talked to Mark about this, about the liability of the county 
uh, should they not pay a loan back or whatever. Uh, it won't be a lien like we have on the septic loan program. And so it will be a little bit different, but we will not be held liable for loans that aren't paid back. Okay. We'll just do all due diligence to make sure we're loaning people. And the final thing uh, that brought to bring before you is you will see in the near future and this is more of a possibility, but I've been talking to Falmouth as the Eco Toilet Subcommittee and then put together a program for figuring out whether they could be used in a decentralized sort of approach to watershed management from their nutrients. We've designed a study plan for them. We've done a lot of support work to help them guide them along the way. And they are looking at possibly entering into an agreement with the county to oversee that program and work with the EP through permitting issues to see how, what the edge of the envelope is and how far you can push that as a decentralized option for controlling nutrients. So it would be like the, in a specific neighborhood? No, no? it would be Cape-wide because they know in Fonda uh -huh. they're not going to get enough participants. So essentially what it is, we would monitor the gray water from these systems residual, take responsibility for handling and coming up with what the cost benefits are. You Every, everything to do with that would be uh, managed by somebody in our department. Very much like we track all the IA systems now. Oh, we yeah. track them, get them right in that same hole. Oh, so we so have a so program already to do it. So you would be testing their efficacy? Yes. Correct. Okay. We'd be collecting all the information, we'd be determining uh, the study plan with DP, we'd work that out with them to say, what do you need to see for them to prove this point to you? Yeah, working that out. And uh, so I've been working with Lynn Monroe, who is the chair of that subcommittee, and as you know, I'm not a member of that committee anymore. So. Now, um, would that be voluntary on the part of the people who would use these? Well, Would they have to purchase them? Or? Here is the other part. Falmouth is thinking of an incentive program where they actually give somebody $5,000 to. I've said that we could administer that program under this agreement with them. They would pay for some staff time. But we administer that $5,000 gift program. But the primary thing is if they get that money, they have to agree to certain things. Let us monitor your gray water. Let us take your water records. Let us intrude upon a little bit of your privacy, how many people you have in the house, what the different mm -hmm. details, which actually add into determining the loads in the end. So they are part of the data necessary to do the proper evaluation. So normally you can't ask somebody, okay, can you tell me exactly how much you spent here, this here, how much water you use, but under this agreement where Fama will be giving the money, They'll have to sign something. That's that five hundred thousand dollars. That's yeah. whatever it is. I'd like to follow up on that conversation when that's coming closer. That we have more. You know, we go through this again just to have a better understanding. Sure. You will. Uh, we're. I've said if they agree, I think the committee is meeting Thursday night because they could either do this, shoot it out to the world in a proposal, or they could. Uh, agree with that the county might be the better way to go. Okay. And I've said to them that they could go either route. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're looking for work. It would be something that fit within our mission because all of these are ultimately controlled by boards of health. They should be overseen by boards of health. Right. And our mission is to support board of health activities. So it fits in there and it, it's open to be uh, you have capacity to uh, support it. We do. Okay. What we would do is probably uh, hire somebody for a couple of days a week to do certain aspects of it. Uh, some of the gopher work, which is basically collecting the samples. Some of the other stuff is really electronically reportable, and we would develop a system to do that and do that. Okay, that's good. All right. So those are the things. Yeah. Thank you very much. For yeah, your time. that's a good Thank update, you, George. George. Thank you. Bill, you should really come home. Yeah. yeah. Really okay, you, you have my thoughts on the next yeah. item on the agenda. Right. Yeah. I think just to tell Tara to take the yeah. yeah. so uh, Okay, go ahead. Right. We'll See your doctor. On, take the vote on this so I can. Yeah, all right. I move through. that we have Carrie take minutes from the Senate. Okay. Well, uh, 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 what about the, uh, well, the uh, summary of actions? Oh, I. Uh, the only question I had, I, had was. Um, 
establishing a sick bank for a person at Children's Cove and then extending that. What is that? Mean? That's what we usually do. We do it sort of on a, we don't have a formal sick bank, but in our policy, we allow people to set up an individual sick bank. Oh, so that they can put hours yeah. into yeah. it. So they, okay, all right. That's, I just didn't understand it. All right, good. All right. Um, Are they, can, they donate their vacation time or their sick time? Sick time. Okay, so it can be rolled over from year to year. Is that what it's? Our sick time can be rolled yeah. over. Yeah, so you can put it in your bank. Time. You can put it in your bank. Yeah, and, you okay. Is there a max? I usually put a limit on up to five days or depending on the situation, maybe more. All right. All right. I second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> it must be because I'm sitting at the table. Yeah, so Bye, Bill. Feel yes. better. Thank you. I don't think it's something. Yeah, you should not. No, you should not have come. But thank you anyway. Why don't you go to the assembly? Yeah, do that. Go back. Come on. Contaminate. Oh my God! I can feel. I feel like germs going up my nose already. I actually felt it. Really, it's like I feel like I'm getting this. So somebody moved the. You moved the. We did. We moved the minutes. We moved. Moved second. All right. And was there anything else? Uh, so anything from the from the audience? Any questions from the press? Yes. No. Sure. We will no? not be meeting next week. We're not we meeting, next, meeting week. next week. Okay. But You're we're meeting well, good luck with your thing. So. Mm -hmm. And you will be here the following week. I expect to. Okay. You know, we talk about is maybe the following week meeting in town. In town. How would you like to do I that? I think we should do that. You're in your living room. Yeah, we have a living room. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know you have one. Yeah, we could go to you want to do that? I forgot to say, Bill. Well, we could do that. Yeah, that oh, sounds great. Why don't we do that? Do it in Highfield. Well, no, I was thinking you could meet in the oh, area town hall. in town hall. Town hall. I mean, there are cameras there. Oh yeah. So the cameras are all set yeah. up. It's okay. Oh, well, we, we won't need to. Steve. Oh well, no, you could come. We would see other cameras. Yeah, you could come. Okay. Yeah, that would probably be better that you came. I get into all kinds of issues with the FCTV. This way, you could just bring your cameras, just okay. like you would if we were in NASA. Well, we have a better sound system. We have to talk about a sound system somewhere down the line, too, because well, it, I, I this is, and we're, so, we're videoing this, so and people cannot hear it. It's well, live. So well, we know is, what we're gonna, hopefully going to do is John is installing the lift for handicapped access into the Harborview conference room. Oh. And once we do that, you mean one of those chairlifts? It's a, yes. yeah, right next to the stairs mm -hmm. there. Okay. So once we do that, we'll move up there. We can oh, put okay. in the sound and camera. And we'll have our smart board, and we can have all kinds all of, of great stuff. presentations. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what what we'll be almost like you know sure. modern times around here. I need a tape change. All right. Or uh, well, we can okay. move to. Are we done? Uh, yes. Yes. Do you I, have I'm any just, other business? I I don't know. I'm just looking up. So the next meeting is. Um, okay. May May second. May second. And do you want to start? Do you want to do it in the morning? Probably. It, there is, well, the assembly meets assembly that day, day, so you'd have to come back. Yeah. And they're, maybe uh, you can meet at eleven. They're not. They're meet, They're voting on the budget, but they're they're not. As far as I know, they don't have any afternoon thing before four o'clock. Oh, so well, we can meet. At at one o'clock. Let's meet at one o'clock. One o'clock, and then uh, after the meeting. Just head over to the assembly. Yeah. But you won't be with and, us. Yeah, I will. Yeah, because okay. that's why we're in Fallon. So, so Pat can. I know, but I just didn't know if she was going to be coming this well, way. Well, I'm not going to announce it. Oh, you, ain't, you may not come with us. Okay, to the assembly. Okay. All right, so. Motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.